Perhaps the U.S. should shut the fuck up about respecting other countries' sovereignty. So Putin has finally made a move, issuing a decree formally recognizing the sovereignty of the separatist-held Donbass territories in eastern Ukraine, known as the DPR and LPR. Russian troops are being deployed to the region in what Putin describes as a peacekeeping mission amid a dramatic spike in ceasefire violations. The recognition of the DPR and LPR means Russia's withdrawal from the Minsk agreements, which were signed in 2014 and 2015 to establish the ceasefire in eastern Ukraine, writes anti-war's Dave DeCamp. Under the Minsk agreements, Ukraine agreed to cede some autonomy to the DPR and LPR. Russia has grown increasingly frustrated over the fact that Kyiv hasn't fulfilled its end of the agreement. Needless to say, the U.S. empire has not been happy about this move. President Biden has already imposed strict sanctions on the DPR and LPR, saying Moscow's recognition of their independence, quote, threatens the peace, stability, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of Ukraine, and thereby constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. Tomorrow, we will be announcing new sanctions on Russia in response to their breach of international law and attack on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, White House spokesperson Jen Psaki added. This decision represents a complete rejection of Russia's commitments under the Minsk agreements, directly contradicts Russia's claimed commitment to diplomacy, and is a clear attack on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, adds Secretary of State Tony Blinken. Other member states of the empire were equally upset about this unforgivable violation of Ukraine's sovereignty. Canada strongly condemns Russia's recognition of so-called independent states in Ukraine, tweeted Justin Trudeau. This is a blatant violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and international law. Canada stands strong in its support for Ukraine, and we will impose economic sanctions for these actions. Tomorrow, we will be announcing new sanctions on Russia in response to their breach of international law and attack on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, tweeted UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. This further undermines Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, erodes efforts toward a resolution of the conflict, and violates the Minsk agreements, to which Russia is a party, says NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. There are all kinds of criticisms that one can level against this move by Moscow, if one feels that the entire Western political media class screaming all these criticisms in unison does not have enough amplification. For myself, I would just like to point out that the U.S. centralized empire is the very last institution on this planet who has any business babbling about the sovereignty of other nations. Absolute dead last. I say this not out of any kind of fondness for Putin or support for his decisions, but because the absolute worst violator of national sovereignty in the entire world, by a truly gargantuan margin, complaining about violations of national sovereignty, is batshit insane. Pointing out things the U.S. empire has done while it shrieks about the actions of a foreign government will get you accused of whataboutism. But it's not a whataboutism. It's pointing out that the U.S. is the absolute least qualified government on earth to comment on the issues at hand so it should shut the whole entire fuck up about it. If the, if the U.S. wants to legitimately complain about the transgressions of unaligned governments, then it must cease being the worst transgressor. This would, after all, be the same empire that is currently circling the planet with hundreds of military bases and waging wars which have killed millions and displaced tens of millions just since the turn of this century. Its sanctions and blockades are starving people to death en masse every single day. It works to destroy any nation which disobeys its dictates by toppling their governments via CIA coups, proxy armies, partial and full-scale invasions, and the most egregious number of election interferences in the entire world, while threatening the entire species with nuclear brinkmanship on multiple fronts. What the U.S. and its proxies are doing in Yemen alone is orders of magnitude worse than anything Russia is doing in Ukraine, or in Afghanistan, or Venezuela, or Syria. Hell, the Biden administration has already done worse than what Putin did just in recognizing Israel's outright annexation of the Golan Heights. To say nothing of the fact that the U.S. thought so little of Ukrainian sovereignty in 2014 that it was still perfectly comfortable staging a coup there with the support of actual neo-Nazi militias 
who the liberal media are still running PR segments for to this day after years of yelling about Donald Trump's intimacy with the far right. The U.S. thinks so highly of Ukraine's sovereignty that it's willing to ramp up Cold War brinkmanship with a nuclear power to defend it, but not highly enough to refrain from backing literal Nazis to topple its government. The U.S. empire criticizing Russia for violating another nation's sovereignty is like Jeffrey Dahmer criticizing someone else's eating habits. After watching the insane, erratic, dishonest way the Western Power Alliance has been navigating the Ukraine crisis, it is clear to anyone with open eyes that this is the very last institution we should want negotiating a power struggle that could quite literally end our world. We can only hope that the Empire's demise arrives before it manages to get us all killed.